coming off. The garage gets some new shelves. A ceiling gets damaged. You stupid bastard. And a song gets butchered. You must have been in love, but it's over now. Okay, so I'm just after spotting this. We have a little threaded hole here. So if this is anything like my E38, you can actually put the bonnet into a service mode. Which gives much better access to the engine bay. Ah, the struts out. And that should free this up, which it does. And then we got a cable tie, which we got to loosen off. There we go. And now the cables are free. Okay, so it transpires that this treaded bolt hole doesn't line up with this bolt hole like it did on my E38. Um, you can get an M8 bolt in here, no problem. And I'm not sure why it's threaded, maybe somebody can tell me. But the idea is that if those holes lined up, you can get a big ass M8 bolt in there and hold the bonnet open. But all I can get in there, and I mean, that's very, very wimpy, is a much smaller M4 bolt with a nut on the other side. So this will do the job for now on both sides and then I'll put some kind of a strap on the top of the, uh, the bonnet to actually keep it fully upright and keep it safe. And that makes things way more accessible and it just about hits my ceiling. Much more light, much more room. You need the water pump removal tool. Not me, apparently. We do! Success! Oh! Oh no! So this is the oil cooler radiator and it is knackered. With the fan removed, I can move on to removing the coolant hose from the underside of the expansion tank. Ooh. Good catch. She's a big girl.
coolant isn't the worst, but it could be better. All the coolant hoses are just held on with these standard hose clamps. Holy shit. Sense did the oil lines first. Hmm, transmission fluid looks pretty red. Got the coolant temp sensor, which is the right bad so you get off. That's it. Makes sense to be sure. Oh, that's nasty. Oh, two. That's the radiator removed, uh, we've got the fan shroud removed, and we have the fan clutch, some hoses removed. And that gives so much room for activities. The condenser is actually in pretty good condition, but I'll obviously have to do a test to see if it's actually um, airtight or gas tight. And then I'm going to be cutting these belts off, and I need to remove the vibration damper to actually get at the lower. Uh, water pump bolts which are underneath here so let's do that now <coughs> uh, Scotty Kilmer uh. That's a sticky one. <laughs> oh, that sounds brand new. Okay, that's going to be coming out. Once more for luck. Right, so this left side tensioner, it looks original. And this one does not. A, because this one is a lot dirtier. And not only that, this newer one suddenly had two washers installed on it. Instead of just one. Yeah, so I'd imagine this is a much newer one. It was replaced at some stage. And this could well be original. It's certainly along with that. And this pulley is also in better condition as well. So 
chances are both of these were replaced at some stage. Must have been in love, but it's over now. Nice. Easy does it. Got you, buddy. I got you. So this is the vibration damper, which has just come off the car, and it's quite a heavy piece. It's probably in and around two kilos, um, and the purpose of the vibration damper is to balance out any inherent uh, wobble uh, or movement, essentially, um, in the crank itself. And you have, where is it? Here we go. That's the marking there for top dead center. So. There's a, a corresponding mark on the front of the crankcase where both of them line up um, when you're timing the engine, the upper cams basically. Um, it's quite an interesting piece. I see these holes drilled in the face of it um, and they're quite uneven. So imagine this, what's actually done uh, to remove uh, any additional weight on one side of the crank, or sorry, the vibration damper, because you've got three holes here which are very symmetrical. Then you've got two separate ones, and then two more which are slightly closer together. So uh, I'd imagine uh, the purpose of them was to remove weight to make it perfectly balanced. Um, so yeah, it's pretty good condition for 30 years old. You can't detect any play in the water pump. It seems pretty solid. Right, time to get this thermostat housing off. Four more 10 mil bolts. Okay, the moment of truth. <sighs> wow, that is wedged in there. Here it comes. That actually looks pretty good. I'd say that was done pretty recently. With all the parts coming off the car, it was time to get some storage on the go.
With the shelves ready to go, it was time to pop them in the corner. Getting the bolts off the water pump is actually pretty annoying as they're kind of scattered all around the housing but once you take your time it's pretty straightforward. So these are our M5 bolts. We're going to be inserting three of these straight into the water pump housing and as they're inserted and screwed in the water pump should slowly pull out. That's the theory anyway. Is it loosening? Nobody knows. So yeah, there's absolutely no way you'd get this off without using this method. It needs to come off nice and square and straight. Okay, I've tightened those bolts pretty much as far as oh, as far as they'll go. So I should be able to pull that straight off hopefully. There we go. Couple of the wires. One water pump. Again, the condition isn't bad. Metal impeller. No wobble at all. Probably fairly recent, although there's a fair bit of corrosion on the outside of it, but it's, I wouldn't say it's the original by any means. What is that? This math actually looks pretty clean. That's quite a build up. That's nasty. Another one. Jesus. Once again, this is loose. Again, it's in reasonable condition. It's pretty recent. And what's this throttle body like? It's pretty good, pretty free. So we have a split here on the left side, and another split here on the right side. So I think that needs replacing. So with the cooling system removed and some of the air intake system, it was time to call it a day. See you all for more in episode three. Thanks for watching.